Hey everyone! It's an unfortunate fact of life that many of us have at some point broken a bone or two. Even if you've been lucky enough to never break a bone in your life, you probably know someone who has. Luckily for us, our bones are not just lifeless scaffolding that our bodies use for support. Bones are dynamic structures, and so are generally very good at responding to damage and rebuilding themselves. This means that if we do have a clumsy moment, we don't end up with one of these for the rest of our lives. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the microscopic structure of bone tissue, learning about its unique and highly specialised morphology and how this facilitates healing of skeletal structures. Bone tissue is a specialised connective tissue that forms the adult skeleton. As well as providing structural support for the body and its tissues, it also protects vital organs and provides surfaces for muscles to attach to. This, of course, is especially important for movement. Bone is very metabolically active. It stores calcium and phosphate ions that are needed for other tissues in the body, like neurons and muscles. It is also the site of hematopoiesis, which involves the formation of blood cells. There are a few different types of bones found in the body. These include long bones, flat bones, short bones, sesamoid bones, and irregular bones. Long bones, like the femur here, are mostly found in the limbs. These are the types of bones your dog likes to chew, or those that you might see if you somehow manage to find yourself on a pirate ship. Long bones have three regions with distinct structures, a diaphysis in the middle, and two epiphyses at either end. Flat bones, such as the parietal bone of the skull, are broad and relatively thin bones. Flat bones often sit with other flat bones and form defined spaces or cavities, such as the cranial vault. Short bones are those knobbly little round bones found in your wrist and ankle joints, like the lunate bone here. They tend to have strange names based on their perceived shape. For example, lunate here means moon-shaped. Sesamoid bones, like your kneecap or patella, are rounded bones which form within tendons. These bones work to increase the mechanical advantage of the muscles whose tendons they're found within. And finally, irregular bones are those odd-shaped bones that do not resemble any particular shape and just don't fit into any of the other groups mentioned previously. The bones of the spinal column, like this vertebra here, are examples of irregular bones. Now let's put these bones under a microscope and see what's really going on in there. We're going to go over the types of tissue that make up bones, how their matrix is organised, and the cells found within them. There are two main classifications of bone tissue. These are woven bone and lamella bone. Woven bone is a relatively weak type of bone tissue which is still developing and its matrix is unorganised. This is the type of tissue bone seen in fetal bones like the one here, or in bones which have been recently fractured. Lamella bones, on the other hand, is the mature type of bone tissue which you find in all developed bones. It is formed from woven bone, which has been remodelled to increase its mechanical strength. Let's take a closer look at lamella bone. There are two types of lamella bone, and these are compact bone and spongy bone, which are largely differentiated by how these groups of concentric layers are arranged or organised. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.